You. You work with gold or silver. Mason? Carpenter? All right, come over here. Come on, move it! We won't be needing the rest of you. Just like the raid in the settlement last week. They take some, kill up the others. Well, I've heard of cattle rustlers, but I ain't never heard of no people rustlers. Uh, someday I'll tell you about the African slave trade. You know, the Arabs have been doing this sort of thing for centuries. Well, now, there ain't, uh, there ain't no Arabs in Texas, is there? Two wagons, nearly empty. Maybe nine, ten riders. Let's go. No, that's another waste of time. We've been tracking that bunch for two months now, and it's always the same. The tracks always lead to a main trail and we lose them. Not this time we won't. Ain't you two coming? Uh, you go ahead. We'll do the burying this time. sir, are thinking again. Oh, what an observant fellow you are. And one of the things you're thinking is that uh, I'm going to do all the digging. Dad, think about the people that have been kidnapped the last few weeks. A cabinet maker, a stone cutter, glass blower, those two seamstresses from Waco, and last week, a tire smith and a leather maker. Yeah, it's a lot of kidnapping, all right. Not to mention those 20 gandy dancers from the railroad. You know, Chad, somewhere someone is populating a little community all as a overnight. Yeah, I know. And all we gotta do is find them. Why not let them find us? we'd wind up like this, Joe. You see, we lost them. Maybe. But they haven't lost us. Now, what's that supposed to mean? It means I'm still tracking. Joe, we've been tracking now for three days. We must have covered over 75 miles. 80. Would you like to try for 90? Gall darn it, Joe. I got saddle sores in my saddle sores. If the Almighty had meant a man to spend three days on horseback, you'd have given him a spare. Hold it, Reese. I got that funny feeling. Drop behind me, Reese. Real natural like. Strong backs, take them alive. Thank you. 
Nice of these folks to bring us where we wanted to go, huh, Reese? Yeah. They made it real convenient, didn't they? What's this all about, Joe? What do you figure all these folks is doing here, anyway? Same thing we are. What's that? I don't know yet, Reese. But I don't think we're gonna like it. <laughs> Told you, didn't I? <clears throat> Quiet. Slaves aren't allowed to talk without permission. Slaves? Now, look here, amigo. There was a little fracas called the Civil War, you know? <laughs> Guys, keep moving. Some folks didn't get the word, Reese. <laughs> hey, what's this all about, friend? Well, who's running this show? Satan himself, my boy. Well, he must be local. That's all I can say. The saints have mercy on us. Here he comes now. Work. Work. <laughs> Large Neil. Uh, not me, friend. Please, it'll go hard on the rest of us. Hail Hannibal. <laughs> You are slaves, yet uh, other men in their folly who consider themselves free might well envy you, for you have been chosen to serve me, Hannibal Rex, in the creation of an empire that will one day rival that of the Caesars. Serve me willingly and you won't be slaves for long, for loyalty brings its own rewards. Serve me well and you will rise in power and status in Hannibal's empire. Whether you serve me well or ill, Willingly or reluctantly, you will serve. Sure, and didn't I tell you he was mad? I don't know. What he said was crazy, but he, but he didn't sound crazy. You know what I mean? He's insane, I tell you. What do you think, Joe? We better start thinking about busting out of here. While we're thinking, let's start digging. Charlie, seen those two big shots from the east? You know, the architect and that sculptor. Mr. Wentworth, Mr. Van Roden. I am Eric Van Roden. And you, sir? Mike Slattery from the El Paso Chronicle. Welcome to El Paso, gentlemen. Thank you very much. I must say, we don't get many men of your profession out this way. Uh, have you seen the story that I wrote up on you in today's paper? Yes, I have. Eric, have you read that? Yes, you were very thorough. I um, hope I get a chance to interview you gentlemen before you leave town. Yes, of course. Tomorrow we'd be on it. Right. Maybe we can talk about that new uh, opera house you're going Shh. to be... Oh. Well, he's not long for his job. You know, he never even realized that I'm at least 20 years younger than the man I'm pretending to be. Really? Well, tell me, uh, how old am I supposed to be? I mean, this... Uh... This guy, Wentworth. Gregory Wentworth is not a guy. You are America's most promising young sculptor, creator of that magnificent work of art, the spirit of Kansas City. Oh. oh. Which is? A nude. Female. Wonderful. Then apparently, uh, Mr. Wentworth is a far younger man than Mr. Van Roden. Or has a longer memory. Yeah. Thank you, Charles. Anyone who's in the market for a sculptor and an architect, you'll know where to find us. Oh, we've been found. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh! 
Marvelous idea, this picnic. What made you think of it, hmm? I try to please. Uh, you mm. do. <laughs> oh. Visitors. How charming. Some coffee? No. I didn't think so. Uh, Mr. Wentworth. <laughs> later, friend, later. Will you go away, please? Now, look, I took... I think he's trying to tell me something. Well, I sure don't cotton to another day of digging, I'll tell you that. Well, let's make our move, then. Now? Well, can't think of any better time. Not much we can do around here by ourselves, anyway. We'd need a whole lot of reinforcements to take this place. Lads, I'm afraid. Why, you horny-handed gandy dancer, you was with us last night. Little babies. No. There is a risk. All right. All right. Anything's better than this. Okay. Start the ruckus. Hit me before those guards get to us. spirit even when misdirected 20 lashes for him and as for you Jomo stop I hope you've learned the error of your ways there's no escape why do you want to leave this place it's a lustrous future for you here in my empire you one day you could be captain of the guards or or the leader of my raiding parties, like Brunning here. You mean I could kill helpless old folks for you? <laughs> no. And incorrigible. How sad. Jomo, you haven't had a worthy opponent of the games for months, have you? We'll save him for the games. He's yours, Jomo. What's the matter with you? My arm. It's broken. Is he worth repairing? Foolish. Foolish. that whip, pal, because when I get loose, I'm going to feed it to you. Give him five more. He won't be talking so tough after that. Mr. Wentworth, Mr. Van Roden. I am Van Roden. And now perhaps you'll give us an explanation for all this. Don't worry about nothing. Boss told me to treat you like royalty. Huh. I think he means like Marie Antoinette and Louis the Sixteenth. Come this way. Hey, you guys! Get me out of here! You know this man? Him? My dear sir, how could I? Perhaps uh, Mr. Wentworth here? I beg your pardon? Really? This way, gentlemen. You know, it's a shame we can't stop and 
pass the time of day with Reese. Oh, well, he's uh, busy anyway. True. True. After you. You know, when this is all over, we'll just buy Reese a drink and explain the whole thing to him. Do you think he'll understand? I doubt it. Gentlemen, it's a pleasure to have you here with me. Well, I'm sorry we can't return the compliment. I understand. It's only natural that you should be, uh, irked at what appears to be my arbitrary methods of bringing you here. And, uh, keeping us here? As my honored guest, Mr. Van Roden. As your captives? No, 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 no. I have slaves in my kingdom, true, but, but they're laborers, menials. But men with your gifts, ah, that's another matter. I don't quite see the distinction. Slave labor is slave labor. Gentlemen, you must think of yourselves as serving Hannibal the way Michelangelo served the Medici. As Shakespeare served Queen Elizabeth, as the builders and artists of Rome were to the Caesars. You're putting us in some rather fancy company. Not to speak of yourself. Do you think I am less than a Caesar, a Napoleon, an Alexander? Is there any doubts in your minds that you're in the presence of an emperor? A personality aside, this is not exactly Nero's golden palace. Precisely. Precisely. That's why I brought you and Mr. Wentworth here. It's not enough for an emperor to be an emperor. He must look like an emperor. Must have all the trappings, the, the decor, as it were. You, Mr. Van Roden, will design an imperial palace that will be grander than Xanadu, more opulent than the Versailles. You, Mr. Wentworth, will execute marbles, bronzes, busts, medallions, all to the greater glory of Hannibal Rex. Together we will recreate the glory that was Rome. A phrase from Shakespeare comes to mind. Oh. Much ado about nothing. <laughs> Thank you, Brownie. You may go. <laughs> Courage. Courage. I like that. And as long as we're bandying quotations, Mr. Van Roden. Rome wasn't built in a day. My empire is modest, but it will grow. Mississippi to the Pacific, from Panama to Canada. I will carve a domain such as the world has never before seen. An empire based on beauty, justice, benevolence. It seems to me you're omitting slavery, terror, and murder. One must break the eggs to make the omelet. You as artists should understand these things. I offer you your greatest creative challenge. You will design my empire. Oh, now that's very generous of you, sir. In return, you will receive first-class citizenship. Monetary rewards beyond measure, and needless to say, artistic recognition. I am sorry, but we decline. What? Absolutely, Mr. Wentworth. Positively, Mr. Van Roden. Or do you think that you can command artists? We are not beasts of burden, Hannibal. We resent being abducted, transported here like cattle. Hail, Hannibal! The silversmith has completed your chalice, sire. You see, there are sensitive men willing to serve me. Rubbish. It's flawed in a dozen places. You think Hannibal would drink from this? I am an old man. My hand is... I've lost the touch. Indeed you have. You failed Hannibal, the one great sin. Please. Please, sir. You shut up! All right, boys, take him out and finish him. Finish him? Brunning, are you presuming to pass sentence now? But it's the penalty. It's like you always said, boss. Not boss! 
sire. Yes, sire. You see, an emperor without compassion would be incomplete. Isn't that right, Mr. Van Roden? I hereby remand the death penalty. Take him outside. Don't be concerned, gentlemen. His arm is only broken. That unreliable right hand won't flaw any more silver. Now, as you were saying... Uh, well, I was just wondering. Do you want the preliminary sketches in charcoal? Or would you prefer India ink? Honor, Mr. Van Roden. Mr. Wentworth. Thank you. Ah, I see you've met Celeste. Most prized of all my wives. She would be. Hmm? Oh, I said she should be. She is worthy of an emperor. Oh, <laughs> uh, where is everyone? The slaves are not admitted to the games, not just yet. A coliseum without a crowd. Yes, I give them bread, but no circuses, not just yet. Only those of proven loyalty, or, as in your cases, men of the highest professional status can attend the game. Now, let us begin the games. to die, salute you. That's a nice touch. Brenning thought of that. Mm hmm. But why not have them say it in Latin? It's far more appropriate. It's very good. Brenning, why didn't you think of that? All right, let's get started. It should be exciting. Oh, I, uh, I doubt it. You know, this is all the promise of a Chicago slaughterhouse. You know, my colleague is quite right. The man is tied. I'd hardly call this sport. Cut him loose! Why this particular form of entertainment? An emperor without the power of life and death wouldn't carry much conviction, would he? Uh, this, too, is part of the surface impression. Trappings, reassure the masses. Like the palace you will build for me, the statues you will create, all part of the picture. <laughs> Dodge! That fellow's giving Joma the best show yet. Almost a shame he has to die. I'm not just going to sit here and wait for that Indian to shorten Joe by a foot. Watch. Brenning! 
Shoot him down! Hail Hannibal! Wait! Ah, a convert. Slave, I hereby pronounce you citizen second class and new champion of the games. <laughs> All right, ladies, out, hmm? out. Oh, well, I suppose we must. Won't forget now, 7 o'clock. 7.30. 8.30. Uh, 9 o'clock. Ah, uh, yes, at Hannibal. Now, that's what I call a gracious host. Hey, Chad, mm. we better get together with Reese and Joe, you know. Reese and Joe? You, you mean you want me to associate with a second-class citizen? And Reese, why, he's only a slave. No, no, no. Hannibal wouldn't like that. Hannibal wouldn't like what? You always sneak around like this. Citizen Van Roden. You know you ain't riding so high as you think? And what is that supposed to mean? It means Hannibal's getting mighty impatient waiting for you two to deliver. He ain't going to wait much longer. Well, I'm ready. Mustn't let the chisels get cold. Mr. Van Roden, would you assist me in selecting a model? My pleasure, Mr. Wentworth. Thank you so much. After you. Hmm. Yes, yes, I, I think he'll do. Citizen? been chosen to model for Mr. Wentworth here. Excuse me, ladies. Judy calls. Well, my preliminary cutting shall be in wood. You, uh... Yes, you, the rancid one. Bring one of these logs to my quarters. No, 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 you buffoon. Not that one. The large one. I, I think the light from the torch would fall better back a little ways. Uh, move that log about a foot, my man. Well, now, wouldn't it be easier to move the torch? No, 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 no. Now, just move the log, please. Uh... Oh. Oh. Yes, yes, I, I think that's much better. Thank you. <clears throat> now, just maintain that pose. Well, now. You were uh, leaving? <laughs> now, Mr. First Class oh, Senator, you may need to move like Hold it. Board. Hold it. Save it for later. We've got a job to do. Yeah, oh, by the way, you had a chance to do that job the other day. What happened? Brunning's got orders to kill every man and woman in this place if anything happens to Hannibal. And Brunning would do it, too. Now, what about breaking out of here, huh? Ah, we've tried that already. Better think of something else. Strike that pose again. Somebody's coming. Run out. It's true. You're using a second-class citizen and former slave as a model for me. Naturally, sire. Well, I couldn't very well ask an important personage such as yourself pose for the many long hours this will require. Of course, the model is only a poor imitation of you, sire. Well, I guess it'll do for now. now. As for you, Mr. Van Roden, where are the sketches for my palace? It takes time to acclimate oneself, sire. You have until tomorrow morning to become acclimated, Mr. Van Roden. Until tomorrow morning. Otherwise, I will have to reconsider your value to me. Now... We wouldn't want that to happen, would we? Of course, sire. Uh, this is only the roughest of conceptions. I haven't yet sketched in the gardens, the fountains, the triumphal arc. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, what exactly was your inspiration for this... Uh, particular style. It was your statement, sire, 
that power must be emphatic. Now picture this palace on the plains of Texas, a proclamation in stone of Hannibal's greatness. The tower, visible for miles in every direction, torches lighting the monumental statue of Hannibal at night. I see. And that figure above, that's supposed to be me. Oh, but of course, sire. Who else could it be? I don't know. It, it vaguely reminds me of William Penn, above the city hall in Philadelphia. I congratulate you, sire. Most perceptive. Thank you. Now that you've had your little game... Game, sire? I'm disappointed that you thought I wouldn't recognize the Philadelphia City Hall. But I expected you to recognize it. Surely you don't think that I would attempt a deception. No. No, 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 of course not. And, uh, you intend to uh, duplicate this structure? Oh, but definitely. There is nothing in the Western Hemisphere more worthy. But an original design... ...is for unoriginal men who think that uniqueness is the only virtue. Now, you, sire... Have the courage to be different. It's marvelous. Absolutely marvelous. Is the, exactly what is marvelous, Celeste? The brilliant conceit of it. Only an emperor could do it. Could dare to do it. Yes! <laughs> do what, dear? To appropriate a building design that belongs to a city. Why, you're saying, if it's good enough for Philadelphia, it's good enough for me. Madam... I couldn't have put it more incisively. Sire, I think you've at last found the architect who can do you justice. Of course, of course, you're right, Celeste. I should have known it before. Mr. Van Roden, I think it's obvious that you understand me. Only too well, sire. But he tried to pawn off a copy. Silence! Brunning, you're out of your depth here. Now, don't sulk. Come along with me and help me find a proper building site. Thank you. But why? Don't you know? I wanted to keep you around a little longer. Well, perhaps you'll uh, allow me to return the favor. That's possible. That's very possible. You're a lot of fun in a picnic. <laughs> Your picnics have a way of becoming very crowded. Well, it could be corrected. Celeste! I want you with me. Certainly, sire. Uh, the privileges of a citizen first class are many, but uh, the favors of any of my wives are not included among them. Oh, furthest thought from my mind, sire. Refreshments. Very nice. Thank you. Justice. There's very little justice around here, my friend. You see that big lug over there? Well, me and him come in here together. Now look at him. Yes, but he's a gladiator. No. That uh, dynamite could be very handy for us. Sure could. I wonder how many men you think we can count on. Well, uh, Joe says he can persuade most of the gladiator. Well, that won't be enough. Hey. Hey, old timer. How's a guy get to be a gladiator, anyhow? I don't know. I guess they just choose men who look like fighters. Yeah? Well, now, just supposing I went and hit myself a guard, huh? 
That might do it. <laughs> I've seen a few men who got into the gladiator school that way. You don't say. Yeah. Priest <laughs> now. Try that one more time and you're going to get a bullet. I was just applying for gladiator school. D do you expect to build a glass roof over the amphitheater? The, the whole thing? You're loco. You know how big an area you're trying to cover? Yes. An area considerably smaller than the Crystal Palace in London, which was roofed with glass. I designed it, you know. This ain't London. What about a hailstorm? Oh, it wouldn't dare. <laughs> Did you notice, sire? He didn't wait to be excused. Yes. Yes, that's right. The oaf. I think it's time to get rid of Brunny. Especially now that we're going to start construction on a new palace. Oh, uh, one question, sire. Where are we going to get the money for the construction? Why, from the Texas government. Very nice. Do they know it yet? No, but they will. Monday I'm sending out a squad to blow up a number of towns in that area. And I'll inform the governor of Texas that unless he comes up with... Uh, Two million dollars, the same unfortunate experience will happen again. And again, and again, and again, and again. <laughs> There's plenty of dynamite. Sounds very promising. When did you say you were sending out the squad? Monday. Yeah. You know what, Joe? It's beginning to look like you. Especially around the head. Vacation is over, boys. They're pulling a happy little insurrection tomorrow. Tomorrow? Why tomorrow? Because our glorious leader has plans to blow up half of Texas on Monday. Oh, wonderful. Always thinking that, fella. I better go tell Reese. Well, hang on a second, part. I'll go with you. Might as well start mapping out our move. Kind of a shame, too. Just getting good at this. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> that a little out of your line? What do you mean, my dear? Sculpting. Among other things that are out of my line is trifling with the emperor's favorite wife. Well, then don't trifle. Put some conscientious effort into it. Celeste, you're, you're looking for trouble. Mm, no trouble at all. Don't you think I'm attractive? Oh, you're beautiful. Oh, how sweet. You know, I'll let you in on a little secret. Oh, emperors are dull sometimes. Terribly dull. And most unromantic. This is very flattering. But uh, I don't care to wind up as the star attraction at one of the slaughters that Hannibal calls the games. I only became Hannibal's empress for one reason. I love having my own way. And when you don't? I have terrible temper tantrums. I usually do something I'm sorry for later. Midnight, darling. Hmm? I'll be waiting. <laughs> Everything's under control. Oh, not quite everything. Trouble? And Celeste wants to herd me into her corral. Hmm. The things we have to do for dear old Company B. But I'm not doing it. You're not? Why? She's poison. She's a woman. She betrayed us once. Never thought I'd see the day when you turned down an invitation from a lady. <laughs> well, this is it. She's expecting me tonight. But she's got a long, long wait. Celeste. Darling. 
darling. Is that you? Yes, my pigeon. I am here. Oh. Oh. You! You! <laughs> he said that. It's not the one you suspected, Brunny. But I'm still grateful. Uh, sire, I, I realize that this may be a little bit difficult to explain, but... Impossible! Get up here. Yes, sir. Running? Exact the penalty. No, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. I, I know a demotion may be a little difficult to take, but somehow I'll face up to it. You'd be surprised at what you have to face up to. At the games tomorrow. wrong, Mr. Van Roden? No, no, I was uh, just looking for my colleague, Mr. Wentworth. I haven't seen him all morning. He'll be along. He'll be along all right. Now, the ingenuity of this will amuse you. The poisonous snakes are in the pit, but we never force the man to jump. That would be too gauche. We let him pick his own time whenever things get too hot to handle. What? You must admit that's clever. Oh, yes. I can see now why you are the life of the party.
you in a minute, old friend. Oh, don't give me that, you rat. You knew it was a trap. I suspected it, yes. And you let me go. Well, somebody had to go so they wouldn't get suspicious. Well, just wait till I get down off of this thing. Listen, if you're not willing to forgive me, I believe you should end our friendship right here and now. I'll, I'll, over, I'll overlook it just this once. Come on. Well, you two stop jawing and move. Let's go. Come on. Pretty hot, huh? Well, you might say that. Gloria Mundi. Gloria who? Gloria Mundi. It's Latin. It means that... Well, uh, I knew a Gloria Monroe once. She was Irish. <laughs> Mundi all taken care of, Joe? Right. Yeah, we're going to have to get word to Parma to get some more men down here. Where's Eric? Huh? I don't know. Where's, uh... Where's Eric? Oh, 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 he said he had some unfinished business to take care of. Oh, well, what kind of business? A picnic. A picnic? Yeah, don't that beat all. <laughs> 